and spending time. You know, I, I, I love Sunday to Sunday. I love Wednesdays too. But to be able to see what God has done for you from Sunday to Sunday. Amen. Right? Because he's done something for you every day. And that's why, you know, when uh, I'm asked to do these, uh, it, you always got something to say because God's always good to you. Yeah. I mean, you woke up this morning, right? Everybody didn't wake up. You know, you, you, you think about all the blessings you've been given in one week. You know, we got 168 hours in one week. We've been blessed 168 hours, amen? amen. Okay? God does so much for us. And one of the things that uh, um, I, I just think about is really where God starts with us. You know, even before he's in our mama's womb. You know, God's got a plan for us. And I love it what it says in Isaiah. I'm going to look at a couple of verses in Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah chapter 46. And this is one of my favorites. And Isaiah 46, 3 and 4. And I got a couple of different translations. But I, Isaiah 6, uh, 46, 3 and 4 says, Listen to me, says the Lord. This is the Amplified. O house of Jacob and all the remnant of the house of Israel, whom you have been born by me from your birth, carried from the womb. Now, think about it. Now we're in the womb. He, he's showing that before he was even in the womb. But he's showing it from the womb. Verse 4 says, even to your old age, I am he, and, to, and even to hair white with age, will I carry you? I have made, and I will bear. Yes, I will carry, and I will save you. Now, and this is another one. I, I even love this. I, I love the different translations the Bible Hub has. Um, Isaiah, verse 3 in uh, New Living Translation. Listen to me. Descendants of Jacob, all you who remain in Israel, I have cared for you since you were born. Yes, I carried you before you were born. And in the verse 4, New International Version, even to you, old age, gray hairs, I am he. I am he who will sustain you. Hallelujah. I have made you, and I will carry you. I will sustain you, and I will rescue you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, I, that is just so powerful. And God's word translation is the last one. But even when you're old, I'll take care of you. Isn't that powerful? Hallelujah. Even when your hairs turn gray, I'll support you. Hallelujah. I made you and will continue to care for you. I'll support you and save you. And let's just take a look at that just for a minute. Think about that. God's always going to sustain you and care. You know, people look like, who's going to take care of me? Him. You know, th th think about that. I, I drive a truck, and I teach truck driving, and, and all the years, I was always so thankful when I got back home on the yard because there's so many things that could have happened. We went on the night drive Friday night, and you see things. There was a truck that went off the road and, and off a ramp there in Iowa City, and you see those things. It wasn't us, but, you know, you, you think about the driver and the family and how that could have been a tragedy or you missed this car. But you know what? When you go with God, I had a wonderful young man. He's really quiet. He got to drive first, but it's like this was about God was just exploding out. He just wanted to talk. He's really quiet. And I thought I, I had to have four in a truck, and, and he's really quiet. But, man, it's something. When he got in that seat and we took off, he wanted to ask me what church I went to. He wanted to ask me about God, the relationship. I said, hallelujah, hallelujah, because it just burst out of him. He's so quiet, and I thought, wow. This is a good time to share what God has done. To think about all the time he's taking care of you. You know, a lot of times, well, I don't know. I don't have a, have a difficult time uh, trusting God because this situation, there's a lot going on. I said, okay, that's, that's you know, I, I understand sometimes we get that. But do you walk on the ground? Okay. How do you know the ground's going to carry you? How are you going to know that? I mean, it might open up or something. How do you know? You don't really think about it a lot. Unless there's an issue, you don't. You just kind of walk along because that ground's been there before you were, and it's going to support you. Now, let's think of God. Is God's going to support you? Yes, he sure he is. God's going to take care of you. He knows the beginning from the ending. Yes. One, one of the best verses that I like the most is, is really in a, a, a Jeremiah 29, 11. That's one of my favorite verses of all time. And, and, and we, all know, we all know that verse. It's just so powerful. And I'm going to go ahead and get it for you. Jeremiah 29, 11. Then we think about this, that, you know, God has plans. Let me just paraphrase here. But God has plans for you. And, you know, he, he has planned to give you an expected end. God has a plan for your life. You know, we think about that, that 
that when you were born, there's a reason you came into this world. It's not just a coincidence. There's a reason. Everybody has a plan and a purpose in your life. What we need to do is just seek God. What do you want me to do? You know, when Paul, is, it's funny, when Paul got knocked out off the horse and, and he was going to, to, to bring Christians and, and put them in jail, he got knocked off. Isn't it one thing he said when he got knocked off the horse and he got blind? Lord, what do you want me to do? Isn't it interesting he said that? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Because he didn't know. He didn't know, but he know he, and, and one thing's interesting, God did not take away Paul's zeal. He just had it in the wrong direction. Instead of persecuting Christians, now he was helped building the church. That's what God does. You know, the things that we do wrong, God can still take them, turn them around, and say, you know, you were so mean to that person. Now let's go back and let's preach the gospel to them. Because we got a difference in us. That's what God does. He puts a spark in your life. He puts a difference in your life. You know, the, the greatest thing, the greatest thing that we can always look at God is that God is for you. You know, when we was, when we was uh, picking sides up, you know, when he was in school, and there was always a kid nobody wanted on their team, right? There, there was, uh, it's true, uh, everybody. There was a young lady named was Marie, Marie Amakuchi, and nobody, well, she had glasses on, she was kind of gangly, and nobody wanted her, but you know how they say, you're going to choose her whether you want her or not. And man, she had the best day, we was playing baseball, she had the best day, then everybody wanted Marie on her team. Hey, next time, I'm going to choose Marie. You know, you never know. You never know what God has in store. That's why you don't ever criticize a person and say he'll never amount to something. You know why? You know, well, you never amount to anything. You never amount. Well, you don't know that. You don't know it because you don't know what plans God has in store for that person. The very person you try to keep down, that person might be your boss one day. That very person. That you said, hey, you're no good. I said, well, I'll tell you what, you can say what you want to say. But I know God says I am worth something. Because he was willing to send his son to die on the cross for me. That's how valuable I am to him. You know, it's, it's nothing wrong to say I'm valuable. You know why I'm valuable? Because Jesus Christ lives in me. That's why I'm valuable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we want to go ahead and we want to open the service up. And, uh, you know... Share what God has done for you, because he has done so much for you. You're here, you're breathing, you're alive, that's a plus, right? I've been to the hospital bed. I, I just think about that day we got talking about walking. I remember I was in the hospital, and I, and I had a back injury and leg injury, and I couldn't walk. I had to learn to walk all over again. That was terrifying. You know, here you are, 50-something years old, and you have to learn to walk each step. And they put me in this brace, and they lifted me up, and it felt like it was going really, really fast. He said, it's only one speed, but it was going too fast. And I remember taking one step, two step, and then the nurse, I'm a big guy, and I had a walker, and she says, okay, Tim, we're going to let the walker go. You're going to lean on me. And she was little. He said, I think, is that a good idea? You know, we're both going to be on the floor, you know. And I said, she just, no, just lean on me. So you take a step. And she had a lot of faith that I wasn't going to fall over on her, you know. But you know what? There was something about that little lady that got to me. She said, lean on me. Yeah. Lean on me. I'm going to help you. There's nothing wrong with asking God for help. You know, that pride's got to go. Because that pride can keep you away from what God wants you to do. Oh, I don't know, God. I don't know if I can eat that. You know, well, that may be the only food around to eat. You know, Elijah got food from ravens. I don't know if they wasn't. Because they were, you know, I mean, that probably wasn't the best. A bird bring you food, you know. And, you know, but you either, you either eat this or you're going to eat nothing. Right? That's the way it's going to be. But you know what? God provided for him, didn't he? God provided for him. And God will provide for you. Think about that every day in your life. Think about all the provisions God has blessed you. Hey, he gave you a job. Gave you a car. I remember those cars. I had Fred, Fred Flintstone cars. You know, I had them cars where you could see the through the floorboard. I had them, man. You might feel like you have to stop with your feet because the brakes wouldn't work. I, I had all those things, man. I've been there, but now I don't have to worry about that, right? Because God brought me along, and that's what he's doing with you. Okay, someone, someone out here. Yes, Roberto. Uh, I want to share some scriptures that were in my heart this morning. First one, Psalm 
That's, that's excellent, Roberto. That's excellent. That's excellent. I always say pray before the fact, not after the fact. You know, because God can tell you no. No, I don't think that's the best thing. Why don't you go over here? Why don't you do this? Why don't you go talk to this person? You know, God already knows. He's too wise to make a mistake. So he, he knows what's best for you. Our job is just to trust him. I mean, I, you know, I'm going down the road at 65, 70 mile an hour with the student. I can no longer stop that truck. Yeah. Absolutely not. And we both did. Right. You know, all, so I, it, at that point, you know, and they, I always get asked, are you scared? Somebody always asks me, are you scared? I said, no, I'm not scared. You know why? You know, because this is not a job for a coward. And, and, <laughs> and, 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 and secondly, I've got to trust everybody's teaching that got you to this point. Yeah. That's what I'm trusting that I know that we've taught you the best possible way we can so you can handle that. So there won't be a mistake made. And we're still watching. We're still watching, but I'm telling you, you know, I feel perfectly calm because now my life is in your hands driving this truck. Yeah. And that's where I thought, man, that's where we got to come to where God's at. That you know what? God, you're wise enough. You're going to only tell me to do the right thing because you are righteous God, true and righteous God and holy God. He's not going to tell you to do something wrong. People, people ask a lot of times, well, I don't know if that's God or not. Let me tell you. You know it's God. He said, I want you to go over and, and take some bread over to your neighbor. Now, who do you think is telling you to do that? You really think Satan cares enough to go over and feed your neighbor or go pray for this person? He don't care about none of that stuff, you know? But you know it's God when he wants you to do something. He said, hey, I need you to go and pray or call this person, talk to them. They're in a situation they need to hear that somebody's locking arms with them right now with their life. Because we don't know where people are in their life all the time. Some of the most quiet ones may be the farthest away from God. Some of the most vocal ones, you know, at least they may be thinking about it. They may not be there yet. But at that time, I've never had too many people ever say, say you know, they say, hey, would you pray for me? I'm praying for you. You know what they say generally? Thank you. That's what they say. They don't say very few ever said, I don't want you to pray for me. Shoot it the other way. Thank you. I appreciate you taking your time out and praying for me. That'll make a change in their life. Hallelujah. All right, someone else. Someone else. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Awesome. God's good. God's good. Yes. A friend of my brother that he graduated with, and well, he's about 60 now. Mm -hmm. His wife, my brother has witnessed to him so many times, and he was agnostic. He, he didn't, you know, he just would not receive us. Listen, but his wife was diagnosed. Mm. 
right. Is that is this a reality? Mm-hmm. And he told her, he said, you know, that's a very legitimate question. You you have every right to say, God, if you are who you say you are, I believe you, but I don't know. And he said, approach God that way, approach Jesus that way, and, and we're going to pray for your healing. And he came to, they had a family meeting, and everybody anointed a paper for him. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we don't understand, and, 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 our, and our faith may fluctuate. We don't understand, but God, we don't understand, but we believe you. You know, and that, and that, and that's a tough situation. I, I, I used to drive through the mountains and stuff, and, and, and it was so curvy, I had to actually go around the road and the, the wrong side of the road because my trailer would scrape the side of the mountain. So, but I couldn't see anything coming around the other side, so it was easy to run it at night because you could see the headlights, and you just trust God that no. Nobody was around the other side, but I had to go in another lane, you know, and all those times I think, you know, uh, people said you have close calls. Yes, I've had close calls, but I give glory to God, how he changed things. I mean, a second this way, second that way, I wouldn't be standing here looking at you, but I just trust God. I would always pray before I left. You know, when I got back, I thank God because all my friends didn't always come back, you know, but God is good. And the one thing we have to realize is, God is good. You know, they, they had a song come out a few years ago, Gay from Them. You know, God is good all the time. And that's what we got to look at. It. God is good all the time. You know, when we, we think, where is God? Where is I'm in the same place. You know, and I, and I talk about this often. There's never, when I get an image of God where he's high and lifted up, you know, he's sitting on the throne. I never have seen him and Jesus, you know, Holy Spirit, they're kind of walking around. Oh, man, what are we going to do down there? Oh, man, let's have a conference. Let's get together. Let's figure this out. No, I always get God. See, he's sitting on the throne, lifted up, high and powerful. I got this. I got this. All they need to do is trust me. I created the world. I got the world in the palm of my hand. And you know what? He ain't going to drop it. Okay? He ain't going to drop it. So that's what you got to realize. And the same way with your own world. He knows what's going on. There's no surprises to God. People wake up. Oh, man, this, this is so chaotic. Hey, I'll tell you what. When you talk about the universe, God called it in existence. He just called it. He said and it was. You think about the stars. He said, this star, tell you what, you stay over there until otherwise. Okay? And I, one time I was down at Graves Lake going through some things, and I was watching the shoreline, you know, come up there. And you know what? It stopped at a certain spot, you know? And God talks about, no, this river is going to stop right here. That's what's going to happen. And God in your life, I tell you what, you claim claim what he can do for you. And I claim it already. That river can stop right here. It's going no farther. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. You, you're talking about the river stopping. The Lord showed uh, me Friday night when we were here. This place went into a flood mode here back about six years ago, six, seven years ago. I can't remember exactly when. Uh, but what it was was the, the, the river.
specifically of a bullet that Star Trek has come and will stop and it's totally stopped now and now he wants us to turn around, take his light and look to darkness while the rest of us believe. Amen. Amen. That's it. Set a standard. Set a standard. Hallelujah. Someone else. That's one thing about it. You can pray for your brothers and sisters no matter where they're at, and God is still there. God is still there. Uh, hallelujah. Someone else. Someone else. Yes. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. Hallelujah. That's awesome. God is good. God is good. All right. Someone else. Yes. Hallelujah. 
Yep, we're going to believe that. Yep. God is able. God is able. He's able. Yes. That's right. And where I'm at right now, I may not know what I was doing before to do what God really wanted me to do. And I'm getting a little peace right now knowing that when we get in the word and settle and everything like that, I'm just going to remind that I'm not going to get, probably not going to get paid for it, but it's going to be much more than that. It's going to be a really fulfilling thing. It's very fulfilling to know. Thank God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just trusting in that and, and just thinking, God, help us get through it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, it was always God working with them. That's it. God's working with you. You know, and, and, and the one thing about God, he's not going to leave you or forsake you. So you know he's going to be with you. You know, you don't have to. I know the other day they showed a picture of the rock, you know, and the little girl in front, rock's pulling an airplane, and the little girl, you know, it looks like she's pulling an airplane. We know she's not going to pull an airplane, but I thought, what a picture of God, you know, because we're out here, but we got somebody big behind us that's going to pull it with us, and I thought, that's the way it is, you know, because it's not by our strength. It's not by our might. It's by the Lord. If it wasn't for the Lord, where would we be? My mom used to say that a lot. Where would we be at? You know, we'd be lost, but God, think about how much God loves you. One, one of my cousins used to always say when things was, was uh, used, good or bad, you know, uh, but God had his arms around you. He still has his arm around you. You know, if your kid has a nightmare, you don't go in there and yell at him. You go put your arms around him and comfort him. That's what you do. You go in there, what's going on? What, what's, what's happening in here, you know? I'm afraid of this or whatever. But you know, you talk with them. We, we like to sit there and pray with the kids, you know, and comfort them and let them know, hey, we love you and God loves you, you know, and we're just one door over. You know, you can call out any time. So they want to know, that, and that carries with them, you know, as they get older, that, hey, yeah, somebody's always with me, and that somebody's Jesus Christ. Yeah. All right, someone, yes, in fact. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that, that's really awesome. I mean, it, it, and, and you use the term little prayer. It may seem little to us, you know, but it's really big to God, you know, because he, he hears he hears those prayers and those matter. Just those little things we utter that, you know, I, I mean, you know, like, Lord, can you give me a parking spot? I mean, that may sound like a big, that's not like a thing, but I've seen them, I've seen them spots open up by the door. Yeah. I mean, just or give me a sale price, you know, give me a sale on this or something. You know, God understands those. He knows how much money you got in your bank account. You know, give us a discount. We went and got this Jeep. I share we got to move. But we went and got this Jeep and went out there and we, we got approved. And they said, the only thing, uh, you know, uh, Tim and Lee, the problem is the only thing, you have to get a brand new one. And I thought, well, is that a problem? <laughs> what kind of problem is that? You have to get a brand new vehicle? Say, said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Only problem, brand new, is that we'll take it. We'll take it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone else. Someone else. Yes. Hallelujah. When he was crucified, I chose to agree that I'm, I'm crucified with him. 
Hallelujah. And with that, you know, you, it falls through the Bible, but um, God opens up so many different doors and, and windows that, that we can uh, look through, walk through, and be a part of. And, you know, over the, over the last few months, you know, an opportunity, um, you know, and I know it's God, but it, it, we can't necessarily sometimes explain that and have a true meaning to everybody. But even when you explain that to somebody that you're giving God the glory for it, they can yeah. turn their head like, what? Yeah. But they're going to think about that. And they, yes, it, it, you know, I believe wholeheartedly that through those things, it's providing another opportunity for that person to gain some revelation. That's right. And that person. Well, we, uh, I, we just hired a new guy, and, and, and the opportunity for me has opened up where um, I, have, I will have the say-so whether I want the position or not, mm -hmm. but sales manager for the company. I've been sales manager in, in a few different companies throughout the years, and there's a lot of responsibility there, but I've known for sure that it's not me, it's been God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, we, I took this uh, new hire up to Chicago for some training this last week, and, you know, you get to talk and you spend a lot of time together, and, and I could tell by some of the things that he was saying that he was a believer, but, you know, so then you have, okay, do I actually cross that line as an employer to the employee? And I say, are you a believer? And he says, well, heck, yes, I am. I said, well, <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's good. Is there someone else? No? Let's go ahead and stand for prayer, if you would, please. Oh, hallelujah. Let's lift the Lord up today. Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, you worthy of glory, Lord. Worthy of glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you can be with these different needs that are represented here today. Lord, we thank you how you move in those cancer issues, Lord. Hallelujah. Because you have a name above every name. A name above cancer. A name above heartache. A name above trial. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. We want to thank you for the praises that's gone up. Hallelujah. Because we know when those praises go up, when those prayers go up, blessings come down. Hallelujah. Thank you for what you've done through this church, Lord, at different people, Lord. Just put your arms around every one of them. Lord, I ask you to watch over pastor and his mind. Mrs. Lord, just, what, Lord, just we want to just watch over them, protect them, revive them. They come back charged up. Lord, hallelujah. Lord, we want to thank you for your word. Hallelujah. We want to thank you for the prayer time on Friday, the ones that was there, Lord. We thank you for that time. Oh, Lord, let us be that standard. Hallelujah. That we say, hallelujah, that we can go and say, you know what? What makes a difference, hallelujah, is Jesus Christ. He is the light of the world. He is the one that can dispel the darkness. Hallelujah. It's always been about in the beginning, God. Hallelujah. That you're going to be with us from the womb to the tomb and in between, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That today your name will be glorified. That today, hallelujah, he'll lift you up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The different needs that we have today, the needs that are in our hearts, Lord, the ones that was unspoken, we ask you in your holy name that, Lord, that you would meet those needs, Lord. Father God, that you are delivered. You are the one that can sustain us. You are the one that healed us in the 
past. You are the one that's going to heal us in the future. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's all about you, God. It's in the beginning, God. You said you're the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, and you're also in between. Father God, we thank you this day. We thank you this day. And we always want to give you the glory. Glory. We always want to give you the glory. Always want to give you the praise because we're going to lift you up. You're a wonderful God. You are a counselor. Hallelujah. You are a king of kings. The Lord of lords. Our Savior. Our Savior. Our Savior. You're our Savior. Hallelujah. You are the one can give us that new heart. That heart that always loves you. That heart that always seeks after you. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, that those that need revelation and how good you are, Lord. Let that revelation come to them. And hallelujah, we want to thank you today because you are so wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yes, and we praise you. Yes, Holy Lord. name. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. hallelujah. Uh, we're going to go ahead and speak the word. We're going to speak the word. All right. Will you not revive us again? that your people may rejoice in you. Hallelujah. I am a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons. I speak in new tongues. I lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created it to function. And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened. And I am not conformed to this world, but I'm transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. Hallelujah. The Lord rebukes the devourer for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant, and Abraham's blessings are mine. Hallelujah. 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 Mr. Juan, would you come up for Juan and Don? Don Juan. Don Juan. Right. Don Juan. <laughs> Let's <laughs> go ahead and pray. There you go. It's good for you. Hello. Lord, we just praise you today, God, for the, that you are worthy all the time, Lord God, that we can just come and just praise your name, and just come out of your spirit, Lord God, and lay them up. And we just pray for this offering, God, that you would bless it and multiply, God, for the music to your glory. And God, for the giver, for the gift, Lord God, for everything that is given to you. feel that the river that was in here Friday night is still here. Just don't get your feet wet, church. Dive in. It's here for you. No matter what your need is, no matter what you're facing right now, the challenges in your life, just give them to the Lord. Give it to you, Lord.
name above all names. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, 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 to break every chain.
freedom, 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 freedom in Jesus' name. chains that bind our praise to you freedom from the lies of the enemy freedom I cried freedom from the chains that bind our children freedom from the chains that bind our praise to you freedom from the lies of the enemy I want to praise you longer than before. I want to lift my hands higher than before. I want to shout a little louder than before. I want to shout a little louder than before. I want to love you more than before I want to dance more freely than before I want to dance more freely than before Freedom 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 
to worship. Worship. I'll worship a little deeper than before. I want to love you more than before. I want to dance more freely than before. I want to dance more freely than before. I've heard the freedom, 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 voices. freedom, 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 freedom.
Let our praises rise like a weapon in your hand. Our praises rise, O oh God. Let our praises rise like a weapon in your hand. Our praises rise, O oh God. Let our praises rise like a weapon in your hand. Our praises rise, O oh God. Let our praises rise like a weapon in your hand. Our praises rise, O oh God. Let our praises rise, O oh God. Let our praises rise, O oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We wrestle not with flesh and with blood. Bring it up a little bit. But powers and principalities. We wrestle not with each other's love. James. But demonic forces in the heavenly. I have decided I'm going to make a stand. I have decided. I'm taking back my land, I have decided Thus far and no more Gonna take up the sword and fight in the name of the Lord not with flesh and with blood but powers and principalities we wrestle not with each other's love but demonic forces in the heavenly I have decided I'm gonna make a stand I have decided I'm taking back my land, I have decided Thus far and no more Gonna take up the sword and fight in the name of the Lord I have decided I'm gonna make a stand, I have decided I'm taking back my land, I have decided Thus far and no more Gonna take up the sword and fight in the name of the Lord. His name is Jesus, Lord of Lords, Jesus, Almighty King, Jesus, Lion of Judah, Jesus, Lord of Lords, Jesus, Almighty King, Jesus, Lion of Judah. Take them back. Taking the children back. Yes.
wrestle not with flesh and with blood but the powers and principalities we wrestle not with each other's love but demonic forces in the heavenly I have decided I'm gonna make a stand I have decided I'm taking back my land I have decided this far and no more gonna take up the sword and fight in the name of the Lord I have decided I'm gonna make a stand I have decided I'm taking back my land I have decided gonna tower and no more gonna take up the sword and fight in the name of the Lord I have decided I'm gonna make a stand I have decided I'm taking back my land I have decided thus far and no more gonna take up the sword and fight in the name of the Lord. Healing in his midst. Healing in his wings. Healing in his wings. Healing in his wings. but the name of the Lord. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. Someone or someones in this room right now are facing something they think is impossible. for the Lord to take care of. He's here to meet your need right now.
our holy Lord. Oh, we love you this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you have set us free in every way. Thank you, Lord, that it brings us pleasure to worship you. How we love these moments in your presence. We love these moments as we gather together and lift you up and you reveal yourself to us in new and precious ways. Be with us this morning as you deliver your word. Let it be revelation for every person here, Lord. Let it be fresh revelation that we may be transformed by your presence and by your very word in Jesus' name. I would praise the worship team, but that's a little self-interest. So <laughs> the worship team is wonderful. I love being a part of it. It is a blessing to worship the Lord with all of these people up on this platform. I know, right? It's hard. Well, great job, worship team. <laughs> uh, the children can go downstairs. I know, right? The children are free to go downstairs for children's <laughs> ministry. Has some special auxiliary percussion this morning. Thank you, James. Thanks, Roberto, for bringing the warfare on the drums this morning. I don't know if anybody else felt the warfare on those drums this morning, but that was wonderful. Pressing through. That's right. <clears throat> wow. And some special sound effects. All right. Praise the Lord. don't even really know what you're saying, but they're God words. And then you think about what came out of your mouth, and you're like, that was really God. That wasn't me. I have no idea what I'm really saying. And then I think about it. And I was opening the service, and I was talking about how it just seems, I've, I've never understood why some people come, and then they stay, and some people come, and they go. This is a special place. But, and this, and this is what I said that I don't even think I really understood at the time, but I said it takes humility to be part of the body of Christ, to be hidden in Christ and to be part of the one, to not be the one, but to be part of one. Exactly. And at the same time, it takes such an immense amount of individual certainty about who we are in Christ to fully function in each of our individual gifts and callings. And it takes every single one of us to reveal who Jesus wants to be in this body, in this house. And so you can't be special but yet you have to function in the fullness of your gifts and callings here. And that's uncomfortable for people that maybe just want to come and, and be entertained, for people who maybe don't know who they are, who aren't free. If you're not free, it's really uncomfortable to be roaming free with the free folk. You know what I mean? Like, I, you know, um, Sheila gave the example of the dogs in the dog park. You know, you can put a dog in the, in the, in the fenced-in backyard, and they're free, and they're happy, but you let them loose with no fences, and they're really happy. Yeah. But if you've never been set free, think about the elephant, who is a little baby, and they put a little stake in the ground, yeah. and then he's this huge, thousand-pound animal, and that little tiny stake in the ground, because he doesn't know he's free. Right. We have to be so sure in who we are. And that night... I don't know, there's just these moments in this place where I just feel like the scriptures are open, where heaven is open, and where revelation just comes. And that was one of those nights for me. And, it, and it's so funny because it wasn't even really what Nathan was talking about, but like you have those moments where you thought you knew something and you thought you understood it, but then revelation comes, and those pieces of the puzzle just fit, right? Those things that you thought you kind of saw, were they just come so clear, and you realize, wow, I had that wrong, <laughs> or wow, that's amazing, or God reveals himself in some special way, and, and Nathan was preaching about God's love, about the depth and the height and the breadth of his love, but he, he was reading scriptures about revelation. He read James chapter 4, verses 6 or 8, but he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. He read 1 Corinthians 2, 7, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, 
which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Colossians 2, 3, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And, as, and, and, and then it reminded me of the scripture in 1 Corinthians 13, 12, where it says, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now we know in part, but then shall I know even as I am known. There's a time where these things are fitting together, and we're in that in time where it's so important for us to be listening, for us to be looking for those moments, those windows of opportunity for God to speak to us and to put those puzzle pieces together because we won't be able to reveal him in his fullness unless every single one of us reveal the revelation that comes to each of us personally. So those moments of light, those moments of illumination and understanding God turns on the light, and we can't believe we never saw it before. Most of the time, we're only glimpsing the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, in shadows, in bits and pieces, in a reflection, but never face to face. But as we live a life built upon, relying on, strengthened by, and full to overflowing with the grace of God, and the grace of God alone, only then is God able to reveal these hidden mysteries. Only then can he give us the true treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Only then are we able to understand the deeper mysteries of God because we understand who he is. But revelation for me may not be revelation for you, and that's what always makes me nervous. I think it's a big deal to me, right? And you, have you ever shared with somebody, they're like, oh, well, yeah, I knew that. Okay, well, I didn't, or maybe it's just those moments. So what I'm going to share today is by the nudging of the Lord. <laughs> you know how you think you know something, you think you want to share it, and I was just so sure, and then doubt creeps in, right? And then some, and then Nathan preached his message last Wednesday, and then Nathan preached his message last Sunday, and then there were scriptures on Friday night, and Jamie opened the service with a scripture about exactly what God's been dealing with me about. And then the, the you know, and then the service today, you know, the songs we sang. I want to talk about the name of Jesus. I want to talk about the name of our God. I think he's made it abundantly clear that there's power in the name of our God. There is freedom in the name of our God. And so in our life, there's three events, three life events, right, where we get a name, right? There's birth, there's adoption, and there's marriage. All three of those in our life are things where we get a new name, right? And what is a name? The name is, is how we identify ourselves, right? It's how we, we identify with who our family is, with who we are. In the Old Testament, the names were about character, about God's purpose and plan for your life. So at birth, our parents pick our names, and if we're lucky, we get a good one. <laughs> Craig doesn't like his name. He's always told me when he turned 18 he was changing his name. I'm like, what? You don't like your name? But your parents get a pick, right? And then there's a birth certificate. There's a legal document that says, this is your name and these are your parents, right? right? And sometimes God stepped in and he changed people's names, right? There was Abram, and he said, no, you're not, you're not just exalted father. You're Abraham, the exalted father of a multitude, the father of many nations. With Jacob, he stepped in and said, no, heel holder, surplanter, trickster, you are no longer Jacob. You are Israel. God prevails. There are moments in our lives where something happens. Those are our born-again moments, right? We have the ability to be reborn. How miraculous is that? And Nicodemus, Jesus was talking to Nicodemus in John uh, chapter 3, verses 3 through 6. And, he, and Nicodemus was saying, what? How? And Jesus, and I'll just read um, John 3. 3 through 6. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So we have been born of the flesh, and we have all been born of the spirit. We've been given new life. We've been given a new identity in Jesus Christ. 
in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 22 through 25. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 23 through 25. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the very word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is the flower of the grass. The grass withereth, and the flower therefore falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. We will live forever in the new birth. And some of us in our natural lives have been adopted. I don't know, I, I just feel like there's an unusual number of people in our church who have been adopted, but I personally have been adopted. And I was adopted by my grandparents, my mother's parents, which makes the family tree very interesting. <laughs> my mother is, or my mother's now my sister, and my niece is now my, my, my sister's now my niece, and it's very interesting, and it's a Jerry Springer show, it is. We'd kind of joke about our Jerry Springer show. <laughs> yeah, so, but really... So I just kind of, I, I, I pulled rank. That's what we joke. I pulled rank and moved up a step in the family tree. And now I'm an aunt, not a niece or a cousin. And, but my parents received custody of me when I was two years old. And I, you know, I was two, so I don't know anything else. To me, it's just a story, right? I was two. I didn't know anything else. And they raised me, and I wasn't legally adopted until I was 10. Well, this created a little bit of a hiccup when they went to register for me for school because I had been raised from the time of two with the Marshmans. And my birth certificate didn't say Marshman. My birth certificate said Nelson. And at school, well, they can only bend the rules so much, but thank the Lord, when we went to the principal's office, they told me what name I had to write, and I said, I'm not writing that name. <laughs> you know, five, right? Five-year-olds are very, very easy to work with, right? When not, not stubborn at all. I'm like, that's not my name. I'm not going to write that name. You, you said I'm a Marshman. Why do I have to write Nelson? That's not my name. So we had to have a meeting with the principal of the school who allowed them to register me in my birth name, but allowed me to use my adopted name as long as my parents promised to adopt me at some point. <laughs> so I was not about to write that name. That's not who I was, right? That's not who I was. Amazing that I could be a stubborn child, but I was not a Nelson. You couldn't tell me I was. That was not, I, I, he was a stranger to me. That man who gave me that name was a stranger to me. Do you know what I'm saying? He was a stranger to me. I was, that's not my name. Our old self should be a stranger to us. We have been adopted. We have a new name. We have been raised and reared by the Holy Spirit. And we have been adopted. And when you're adopted, you know what they do? They rewrite your birth certificate legally. Now I'm not only their child in every way that really matters, but now legally my name, the law, in court, I had to say before a judge, I want to be a Marshman. I said in the, and, and I was nodding my head and he had to tell me to speak out loud because it's really scary when you tend to be in the courtroom and the judge is up there in the high seat. Do you want these people to adopt you? You have to say it out loud. Yes. Do you want to be a Marshman? Yes. Yes. Do you want to be in the family of God? Are you excited about being adopted? Are you excited to take his name? Romans uh, 8, 15 through 17. Romans 8, 15 through 17. I love good news. I love good news. And this is all good news. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. And if so be that, we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Oh, we have been adopted. He has signed the document. We are his. Galatians 4, verses 4 through 7. Galatians 4, verses 4 through 7. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son,
Son than an heir of God through Christ. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. I can go on and on and on. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Oh, church, that is some good news. According to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace. Your adoption is a praise to the glory of God's grace. And he has accepted us. And we are one with our beloved. In John 15, 5, he says, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. I don't want to try. I don't need to try. I am his. And then there's marriage. The beautiful, sanctified, holy union of two becoming one. And for the ladies, the big question to hyphenate or not to hyphenate. <laughs> But we get a new name, yes. and we, get, we form this union that is a mystery, the two becoming one. And in biblical times, there wasn't really a question for the women, and it's the same for the bride of Christ. There's one name. There's no hyphens. There's no Suzanne Marshman hyphen Jesus hyphen Gerlach. It's Suzanne Jesus. I love that. I was thinking about that. It may sound kind of corny, but hey, I'll take it. I'm Suzanne Jesus of the family of Jesus Christ. And so Mark chapter 10, verses 7 through 9. Mark 10, uh, verses 7 through 9. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh, so then they are no more twain, but one flesh. For and therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. So what God has joined together, no one can take apart. There's a reason why the bride is us. We're the female in this equation. It's the man that leaves father and his mother, and he cleaves to his wife. She just has to receive it. She doesn't do anything other than receive her husband, and he cleaves to her. He does the work. Isaiah 54, 5 Isaiah 54, 5. They're all good. Yeah, Isaiah 54, 5. Sorry. Yeah, 54, 5. That's all right. For thy maker and thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. Thy Maker is thy husband. And in Revelation 21, verses 1 through 7, um, actually I'll just read 1 through 3. Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 3. It's a picture of the end. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea, and I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Uh, and then Revelation uh, chapter 21, verses 9 through 11. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, and I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, 
even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. So there's only three scriptures in the Bible that talk about a new name, that in the end we get a new name. And this, is, this first scripture is Isaiah chapter 62, I'll read uh, verses 1 through 12. This is kind of a long passage. But this is what Jamie opened the service with Friday night. And this is what let me know that maybe perhaps, just maybe I was on the right track of what God wants to share this morning. Just a little bit. I know. And I told Roberto, he's like, you know what you're talking about? I'm like, well, I think. And then she read that and he looked at me. He goes, now you know. (laughs) For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Remember what Nathan talked about last week? Our crowns and our rewards? It all comes together. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate, but thou shalt be called Hephzibah, and thy land Beulah, for the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be married. Thy land shall be married. For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall the sons marry thee, and as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace, nor day or night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silent. And give him no rest till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. The Lord hath sworn by his right hand, and by the arm of his strength, Surely I will no more give thy corn to be meat for thine enemies, and the sons of the stranger shall not drink thy wine. For the which thou hast labored, But they that have gathered it shall eat it and praise the Lord. And they that have brought it together shall drink it in the courts of my holiness. Go through, go through the gates, prepare ye the way of the people. Cast up, cast up the highway, gather out the stones, lift up a standard for the people. Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world. Say ye to the daughter of Zion, behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and thou shalt be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. So there's a couple things that stand out to me. And they shall call them thy ho- the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and thou shalt be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. I've always been confused about is the bride a city? Is the bride a person? It's both. What's a city made of? The holy people. And in Revelation chapter 2, verse 17, uh, there's two references of a new name in the scriptures in the letters to the churches. Revelation 2, 17, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, save it he that receiveth. Well, I've always thought I'm going to get a cool name. I'm going to get an awesome name. I've been daydreaming while I like, I, I, you know, you know, uh, you know, it just, you know, whatever, daydreaming. What, what's my name going to be? And then in Revelation 3, verse 12, it talks about the Lord's new name. Revelation 3, 12. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God. And the, new, and the name of the city of my God, which is Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. So this is confusing. There's, there's the bride of the lamb, which is a city, but the city is the holy people, but then, then he that overcome are the sons of God, and then we're all one, but what? Well, that's just it. We're all one. We're all one. That we're all one. It's all one. There's no beginning. There's no end. Only the Lord, the Alpha and the Omega. And they got it. Like the, the Israelites, they understand this. Deuteronomy 6 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. 
Jesus said, this is the first commandment, and Jesus answered them. The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. We don't have to figure it out. We don't have to worry about the end times and who's what and what's where and who's what. It's all one. And, you know, I... I, I talk a lot about these visions. When I, was a, when I was a new believer, the Lord tried to teach me things by showing me these, these, these pictures, like these little movies, these imagination, these cartoons. And there's one that's, I just never understood it. And I think that finally, the Lord's trying to explain to me the oneness. Like, because I, I, was, I was just, I was praying about the Lord. I'm like, no, oh, Jesus, you know, I've, I've always imagined Jesus when I was talking to the Lord, right? Because that's, that's who I identify with. And we were talking. We were having a conversation, which we do a lot. And I said, Lord, show me the Father. And so I had this vision where we're at the veil. And I said, show me the Father. And he took me in. Well, the minute my toes crossed the threshold of the torn veil, I was on my face. And I was terrified. And I wanted so bad to look at God's little toe, like on the throne. Because I was in the throne room. And I remember, and I just remember, I wanted to look at his little toe. I couldn't. I wasn't worthy to look at his little toe. And I remember thinking, I can't even live here. Like, I can't even exist here. And I asked Jesus to come cover me. And he came and he put his arms around me, and that was the end of it. And then a couple weeks later, I had kind of a continuation of that. Only this time, Jesus and I were already together. And I'm like, let's us go in. And when us went in, it was just, there was no throne. It was just us. And there was a joy that I've never known. And it was just glory. There was no me. There was no Jesus. There was no throne of, that scared me. There was no big toe to look at. It was just glorious. And I was dancing. And I was rejoicing. And I never understood. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because it all just is. God says, I am. I am. And I think that that's what he was trying to show me is that there's no begin to me, there's no end to me, there's no beginning to him, there's no end to him, there's no, the Father in Jesus, there's no beginning, there's no end, we are one. Right. And when we're one, we just rejoice. There is just nothing but glory, nothing but peace, nothing but love, nothing but joy. I was dancing and rejoicing, and I thought, this is what God wants. Yeah. This is what brings him joy for people to just come. But we have to come in Jesus. Right. Suzanne, I can go in. I couldn't go in. I wanted him to take me in. But the second time I said, let's us go in. We were already one when we entered in. And it was magnificent. And this is what Jesus was trying to express in his prayer in John chapter 17, verses 20 through 26. John 17, 20 through 26. We have such a hard time with eternity in in our human mind. There's a beginning and an end to everything. Everything is in time. Everything has a place. There's you and there's me, and I can touch you and I can feel you. But in eternity, it just is. And so Jesus was praying, with his, um, praying, John 17, verses 20 through 26. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word that they may all be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them, and and thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, Be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. This is exactly what he was talking about. There's no beginning and there's no end. This body, when we are functioning, when we are worshiping, there's no Roberto, there's no Mike, there's no Suzanne. We are one together, one voice praising God, and he comes and he dwells. And it is, it is pleasure. It is joy. It is peace. 
people, that's where the manifestations of God come. That's where the miracles happen. That's where lives are transformed. Because it's not about us. It's about him. It is the mystery of the Godhead, the three in one, the mystery of the body of Christ that all of us can be married together in one in him. And that means there's only Christ and him crucified. But every single one of us have to be functioning in the fullness of who you are in Christ because every one of us are needed. God is more than my gifts. He wants to reveal himself in more than my gifts. He wants to reveal himself more than Roberto's gifts and Tammy's gifts. All of us, we have to come and we have to speak and we have to share our hearts. That is how God is revealed. So even though I've always thought I was getting a new name written on a pretty white stone, there's only one name. The name above all names. The name of the one who created heaven and earth. The name of the redeemer of all mankind. The name of the one who will reign for all eternity. The name of Jesus Christ. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Savior, brother, friend, husband, all in one. Yes. And how can it be? Because he is the great I am. Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and, and shall say unto them, The God of your forefathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say unto me, What's his name? What shall I say to them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thou shalt Thus, thou shalt thou, thus shalt thou say unto the children of God, I am has sent me to you. I am has sent me to you. I am has sent you to me. I am has sent us here together to be I am to the world around us, to this neighborhood, to this city. He is Jehovah. I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Jehovah, the existing one. He just is. He is. He fills all things. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. And Isaiah 9, 6, the one that we all know. For unto us a child is born. Unto us is a son given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Isaiah 52, 6. Therefore my people shall know my name. Therefore they shall know in that day that I am he that doth speak. Behold, it is I. God is our shield and our exceeding great reward. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will be withheld from them that walk uprightly. God is the living word. John 1, verses 1 through 5. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. He is the light. He is the life. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. God is love. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. God is light. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. And our God is a consuming fire, for our God is a consuming fire. Our God is Alpha and Omega, beginning and end, and there is but one name. There's one name. There's only one person in heaven that gets a new name, Jesus. And it's the same name that we get. His name is our name. A Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 through 16 again. Revelation 19, 11 through 16. 
And Jesus answered, uh, yes, no. Uh, Revelation chapter 19, 11 through 16. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he shall treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. There's one name. One name. And you know what that means? That means it's good news. It means you and I don't have to worry about what's written in the book. Because all it says, the Lamb's Book of Life says Suzanne Jesus, Tammy Jesus, Roberto Jesus, Don Jesus. That's all it says. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Our sins are blotted out. It's as if they never happened there as far as the east is from the west. We are one with him. And he gave us everything. He signed the legal contract by laying down his life. He paid the legal fees with his blood. How much more can he show us his love? He gave us new birth, born again. He adopted us into his family. And he has betrothed himself to us so that we may be one for all eternity. What more can he do to show us? Nothing. It's finished. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, thank you, Lord. So just continue to pray for Pastor and Sally as they're in vacationing, enjoying some time away. And... Uh, We'll see you Wednesday if you can make it, and uh, hopefully back next Sunday. So praise the Lord. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.